Hello, I'm John Paul and today at Rimmer Brothers we're going to be changing the clutch on a Discovery 2 TD5. Before we start doing the clutch I'm just going to disconnect the negative terminal on the battery just in case the starter when it's hanging has got a live wire on it and we don't want it touching anything. To remove the gearbox we first need to remove the gear stick from the ins inside of the vehicle. You re lift the boot, undo the pinch bolt, just pull the gear stick up. First job, remove the rear prop shaft and the handbrake drum. The rear of the prop shaft, we just need to undo the three bolts that connect the rubber down nut to the prop shaft flange using a 19mm socket and spanner. Now we're going to remove the four 916 spanner size prop shaft nuts. And to remove the prop shaft, once the nuts are removed, slide it down the slider and lower the prop shaft. Remove the handbrake drum, we first need to remove the retaining screw using an impact screwdriver. Now we're going to remove the handbrake drum. We're going to remove the handbrake shoes. So we'll first remove the two springs, then re remove the two retaining clips. The two springs are now removed, so we need to remove the retaining clips. There's a, a pin down the center and a, um, a dish washer. You have to push the washer in, turn it 90 degrees to release it over the pin. The handbrake cable from the brake shoe, pull back the spring, Remove the cable from the arm. Remove the handbrake cable, there's two little lugs. Push the lugs in, pull the handbrake cable out. We're now going to remove the front prop shaft. Four 3.8 bolts at the rear, four 3.8 bolts at the front. Last bolt out the prop shaft, drop the front, pull it off the gearbox end, remove the prop. We've lowered the under tray so we can gain access to the exhaust. We're now going to remove the rear cross member. Cross member bolts are captive nuts and only M8, so they are likely to snap. So if you do have any heat, it's nice to get a little bit of heat on the nut before removing them. Remove the engine under tray to gain easier access to the exhaust um, flange bolts. If you're not on a two post ramp, you will have to raise the vehicle body to get enough clearance between the sump and the axle to remove the under tray. The three nuts removed from the top of the exhaust and the two from the rear of the exhaust flange. The only thing left holding it on now is the exhaust bobbin, rubber bobbin. It's a bit difficult to get off sometimes, so it's best to get a pry bar behind and just prise it off its post. Using our pry bar, we're just going to drop the exhaust off its rubber mounts and sit it on the side of the ramp so it's out of our way. Now we're going to support the gearbox using a transmission jack and remove the rear cross member. We're now going to remove the transfer box from the gearbox. We're going to change the seal in between the gearbox and the transfer box prone on these vehicles. So to do this, we need to remove the transfer control cable and the transfer box mount. We remove the cable retaining pin and clip to remove the cable. I'm going to take the transfer box mount off now. Just four bolts into the transfer box and one, one nut underneath. I'm going to remove the gearbox mount so I can lower the gearbox down to get to the bolts on the transfer box. I'm going to remove the drain plug from the transfer box to drain the oil. Okay, all the bolts are now removed from the transfer box to the gearbox. We're now going to lift the transfer box off the back of the gearbox onto the floor. At this point, it would be advisable to use another transmission jack or get some help from somebody else in the workshop. It is quite a heavy unit, but if you're confident to do it, lift it off as it is. Okay, transfer box now on the floor. This is the oil seal we were talking about changing. This is the oil seal between the gearbox and the transfer box. We're going to remove the clutch slave cylinder now. Two M8 bolts, top and bottom, pulled straight out, and that's just the, the actuating rod that goes onto the clutch fork is inside there. We're going to remove the sound deadening from the top of the bell housing. So you can, this can be removed quite simply. Nothing holding it in, just sits on top of the bell housing. Out of the way so we can gain access to the top bell housing bolts. We're now going to remove the starter motor. So take off the positive battery lead, the trigger wire, and then the three bolts that are fixed to the bell housing. Once that's been removed, it's also worth mentioning that the crank sensor, which is directly above the starter motor, needs unplugging before you proceed. Next job is to remove the gearbox. Transfer box is off, starter motor is off, slave cylinder is off. Make sure you disconnect the reverse light switch and any other wires or pipes you can see. Undo all the bell housing bolts, leaving one in at the top just for safety. Position, make sure you position your uh, transmission jack properly. Last bolt out, remove the gearbox. Box is out of the way. We're going to take the clutch off, remove the dual mass flywheel, 
and inspect the uh, rear main oil seal. Remove the clutch, remove the six M8 nuts, uh, and then remove the clutch cover. Just be careful that the clutch plate doesn't drop down, so just hold it when you're removing the clutch plate. This, this clutch is fitted with a dual mass flywheel. Um, a dual mass flywheel is essentially two, two, main, two normal flywheels joined together with a friction plate and a series of springs inside. Um, we fit dual mass flywheels nowadays because the higher torque of the diesel engine um, creates a little bit more vibration, so the dual mass flywheel absorbs the vibration and stops gear chatter. With the clutch out of the way, we're now going to take the dual mass flywheel off, remove the eight uh, M12 bolts, and then lift the flywheel off. It is heavy, so just go careful. We're now going to remove the rear crankshaft oil seal. It's, it's housed in this housing here, so you want to take the five bolts out, prise the housing forward, and there's two little dowels coming in the back of the sump, so just prise it forward, lift it off the dowels. With the oil seal removed, it's a good idea just to clean around the, the surface where the seal sits and on where, where it sits on the sump as well and around the crankshaft. It's a good idea when fitting the new seal housing just to put a little smear of gasket sealer around the edges before refitting it. The centre um, the, the, the center fitting tool is to go over the crank so the seal doesn't split when it goes over the crank. The two dowels on the sump gasket go into the bottom of the, of the housing for the rear main oil seal. To fit these, we just kind of lower the sump a few millimetres so that the dowels go into the, end, into the uh, crankshaft oil seal. Do this, slacken the few bolts around the sump, drop it down a few millimetres. With the sump lowered, fit the tool onto the crank and then gently push the seal into place. Remove the seal fitting ring, replace all the bolts, tighten the sump back up, job done. Before we put the new clutch and flywheel in, we're going to replace the spigot bearing. Here's the new spigot bearing, and to, to uh, use the special tool inside, tighten it up, use a slide hammer to pull out the bush. To remove the bearing, you push the tool down the centre, open it up to the little lugs catch on the bearing, use a slide hammer to pull it out from the crank. To fit the new spigot bearing, place it in the end of the crank, Tap it to get it started, then use a socket or the special tool to hammer it all the way home. Check there's no burrs. And now we're ready to fit the flywheel. Flywheel. The flywheel locates on the end of the crank. The, the dowel in the end of the crank has to go through the flywheel. Here is the flywheel, and there's the dowel hole. Spin it round, fit it on the end of the crank, then place all the bolts in and we'll tighten them up. We always fit new bolts with the flywheel, they are stretch bolts and they need tightening out to 40 newton metres and then 90 degrees. Do opposites all the way through and then when you get to the finish, they do your last 90 degrees. If you haven't got a dial gauge, you can mark them with Tipex and turn them in 90 degrees. We're going to use this flywheel locking tool just to hold the flywheel in place while we do the final 90 degrees for all the um, flywheel bolts. This is a universal um, flywheel locking tool, but yeah, obviously you can't use a proper one or you can make your own. That's one tightened down to 90 degrees. Remove the flywheel locking tool and we're ready to put the clutch on. We'll get that next. Before we fit the clutch, we must make sure that the splines of the friction plates fit the splines of the gearbox on the spigot shaft. So, pop it on, the fit, Brilliant. Clutch friction plate only goes in one way. Most are marked, and they're mostly marked flywheel side. This one is, so we've got to make sure that that goes flywheel side. This is the clutch aligning tool that I use. It's a sykes pickerman type, but there are others available. And all it does, it, it takes the place of the spigot shaft. It goes in like that, fits into the spigot bearing, then we can put the cover on next. Here is the cover. Pop it into place, there are there are the several uh, dowels that have to be fitted. So as you put it on, make sure the dowels line up. Put the nuts on, torque them down. The dummy spigot shaft or clutch aligning tool, this type, has to make, you have to make sure that when it goes through the clutch disc, it goes into the spigot bearing and you pull it in and out slowly. You then nip up a couple of the bolts and before you, get, before you torque any of them down, you just keep making sure that the spigot shaft goes in and out properly as you tighten them up. 
always tighten them opposites and not all the way, a little bit at a time. Make sure it goes in and out properly, then you can go around and torque them all down, opposites, and just keep checking. The clutch is fitted, we're going to remove, remove the release bearing and the fork and put a new fork and release bearing on. To, to, put, to, to do this, there's a small plastic clip that just holds the release bearing onto the fork, which you lift out, pull the release bearing off. Here's the little plastic clip, it clips into the, re, into the fork and just holds the release bearing onto the fork. Undo the bolt. And pull the fork forward. We're fitting the new clutch fork. Just make sure you fit a new plastic bush in the back of the fork that goes on the ball for the pivot. We also have to change the arm that goes into the slave cylinder, held on by another just another plastic clip. Quite a simple job. Take it off, refit it, and then fit it back in. I'm just going to pop the release bearing in. So you slide it over the shaft and replace the plastic retaining clip we saw earlier. I'm going to jack the gearbox up and put it back in. Just a good idea at this time just to push it into gear so that we can turn the back shaft and it'll turn the front shaft as you're getting it lined up with the splines. A little bit easier. Just before we pop the gearbox in, we just jack the front of the engine up just to lower the rear of the engine so it gives us a bit more room around the bell housing when we're fitting the gearbox in. Now the gearbox is popped back in, we'll now refit all the bell housing bolts and then we'll move on to putting the, the rest of the items on. Okay, we're just going to refit the starter motor now. Just before we do that, just clip on the rear crank sensor wires. It's just a little bit easier to do that before we do the starter motor. So that's there on, lift the starter motor into place. bolt her up. Right, to replace the slave cylinder now, we'll just make sure that the connecting rod goes in the centre of the slave cylinder boot, push it towards the bell housing, then bolt it up with the two M8 bolts. Now the gearbox is in, we're just going to replace the seal in between the transfer box and the gearbox. So it's just a case, put a bar in, flip out the old seal, Make sure it's clean and tidy, and just replace it. All you do there is just put the new seal in place. Tap it in, ready to go. We're now going to lift the transfer box up, pop it on the back of the gearbox, and bolt it all in place. Just going to replace both the breather pipes now, one for the gearbox and one for the transfer box. Just little banjo bolts, through the banjo, one into the gearbox, and the other one into the transfer box. We've refitted the cable, put the pin in, if you clip the lock in place, and then put the sir clip in to hold the cable in place. Reconnect the two electrical plugs, one for the high-low switch for the transfer box, on its little mount, and the other reverse light switch around the other side. Right, refitting the handbrake shoes. Hold the spring of the cable back, put the cable over the arm, and release the spring. Put that shoe in place and reattach it with your spring and retaining device. Once this shoe has been fitted with the handbrake cable and the retaining clip, which which, which holds in, but you, you push this against the spring, turn 90 degrees so the two little lugs sit in the holes. Then put the brace between the two shoes in, the other shoe and the other retaining device. And then we'll fit the two return springs. We're now going to replace the handbrake drum. Pop it onto the studs. We just do jiggle about. You might have to just give it a quick tap. And then put the grub screw back in to hold the drum in place. To adjust the handbrake, 17mm socket 
onto the adjuster in the back of the back plate, tighten it up till it goes tight, and just slacken off a couple of turns till the drum moves again. Now we're just going to pop on the rear gearbox mounts, quite simple, into place, the four nuts and bolts, same on the other side. Put the front pipe back on, on its little clamp, three nuts at the top, just leave it loose till we get the rest of the exhaust on and tighten it all up once it's all mounted properly. The exhaust fully back on, three bolts at the top tightened up, all the mounts on, brilliant. So now we're going to pop front prop shaft on. Four bolts at the front, four bolts at the back, same as when we took it off. Before we fit the rear prop shaft, we're just going to change the rear cushion drive. Uh, you can buy the full kit from Rear Builders, it's called all the things you need, the new nuts and bolts, the cushion drive and the centre bearing. Just going to undo the three nuts and bolts, remove the cushion drive and replace the new one. With the cushion drive removed, we need to remove the, the uh, prop shaft centre uh, lining uh, bearing and to replace it with a new one. I think we can do this using the same slide hammer we used for the spigot bearing. With the new cushion drive in place, we're just going to pop the prop shaft back on. Pop it on the four bolts at the uh, handbrake and then pop it on at the back of the prop shaft, new bolts in, bolt it up. Time to replace the rear cross member, so just pop it into place. Tighten everything up and then we'll move on to the front cross member. Last little thing on the underneath, you need to top the transfer bo box back up with oil, uh, check all your nuts and bolts, have a good look round and then we'll move to the inside. Put the gear stick back in, battery terminal back on, then we're finished. Now we're just going to replace the gear stick. Quick tighten up. Replace the rubber boot, just clips into place. Like so. That's it inside. And we're just going to replace the battery terminal. Tighten it up. Put the cover back on. And then that's it, we're about done with this job.